in our last video we have studied how to draw a developed winding diagram in case of simplex lap winding now in this video we will learn how to draw a developed diagram for simplex wave winding okay let us let us now note some important points related to simplex wave winding so first point is the back pitch and front pitch are always odd and both have same sign means both yb and yf are either positive or negative then yb and yf can be equal to each other means yb can be equal to yf and if yb is not equal to yf then the difference between two must be of two that means yb and yf must differ by two or yb and yf can be equal then the next point is both yb and yf should be nearly equal to pole pitch so this is required to obtain maximum induced emf then the average pitch ya it is given by yb plus yf divided by 2 and commutator pitch yc it is given by number of commutator bars plus or minus 1 divided by number of pair of poles and yc is also equal to ya so in simplex wave winding commutator pitch yc is equal to ya in case of lap winding which we have studied already in that case yc is equal to plus or minus 1 but in this case yc is equal to ya then the resultant pitch yr in case of simplex wave winding it is yb plus yf in lap winding it is yb minus yf but in this case yr is equal to yb plus yf then number of parallel paths in case of wave winding number of parallel paths in the armature are equal to 2m where m is the multiplicity of the winding in case of simplex winding m is equal to 1 and therefore number of parallel paths in the armature is equal to 2 in case of simplex wave winding if the winding is duplex m is equal to 2 and so on then one more important point which is to be noted is in case of simplex wave winding the average pitch ya is equal to number of conductors z plus or minus 2 divided by number of poles and ya must be an integer then only the winding will be possible and therefore in case of wave winding there is a restriction on the value of z for example let z is equal to 32 then ya will be equal to 32 plus or minus 2 divided by 4 and you can see that ya is not an integer and therefore wave winding is impossible with 32 conductors and 4 poles whereas for the same number of conductors lap winding is possible but wave winding is not possible and therefore in case of wave winding ya must be an integer then only the winding will be possible and ya is given by z plus or minus 2 divided by number of poles now we will draw the developed diagram of a 
simplex two layer wave wound armature winding for a four pole generator with 26 armature conductors so here number of conductors z it is equal to 26 and number of poles is equal to 4 and we have to draw a developed diagram for simplex wave winding now first of all let us calculate ya to check whether the winding is possible or not so you know that ya is equal to z plus or minus 2 divided by number of poles so here ya is equal to 26 plus or minus 2 divided by 4 so ya is either 6 or 7 so as ya is an integer the winding is possible now we have to select the values of yb and yf now you know that yb and yf must be odd yb and yf can be equal or there must be a difference of 2 in yb and yf and therefore we will take ya is equal to 7 and we have yb is equal to yf is equal to 7 so we will now prepare the winding table with these values of yb and yf so in this case back pitch yb and front pitch yf it is equal to 7 now using these values let us prepare the winding so there are connections on back side and front side that is front side is commutator end and back side is the other end now here we will start from conductor 1 so on the back side conductor 1 will be connected to 1 plus 7 that is 8 so on back side we have to connect conductor 1 to conductor 8 then conductor 8 on front side is to be connected to conductor number 8 plus 7 so here both yb and yf are positive so 8 must be connected to 8 plus 7 that is 15 then 15 must be connected to 15 plus 7 that is 22 then 22 22 must be connected to 22 plus 7 that is 29 now the total number of conductors are 26 and therefore 29 is nothing but 29 minus 26 that is 3 now we have to connect conductor 3 to 10 then 10 to 17 then 17 to 24 and then 24 to 31 and 31 is nothing but conductor 5 now on the back side conductor 5 must be connected to 12 12 is connected to 19 then 19 is connected to 26 and then 26 is connected to 33 and 33 is nothing but conductor 7 so 26 must be connected to conductor 7 on the front end then conductor 7 is connected to 14 14 must be connected to 21 then 21 is connected to 28 28 is nothing but conductor 2 then 2 is connected to 9 then 9 is connected to 16 16 is connected to 23 then 23 is connected to 30 and 30 is nothing but conductor 4 then conductor 4 on front side is connected to 11 then 11 is connected to 18 then 18 is connected to 25 then 25 is connected to 32 and 32 means conductor 6 then conductor 6 is connected to 13 then 13 is connected to 20 and 20 is connected to 
27 and 27 is nothing but 27 minus 26 that is 1. So we started from conductor 1 and return back to conductor 1 without any break in between and therefore this forms a closed winding. Now with the help of this winding table now we will draw the developed winding diagram. Let us now draw a developed diagram with the help of this winding table. So here number of conductors are 26 and number of poles are 4 and YB and YF both are 7. So on the back side conductor 1 is connected to 8. So 1 is connected to 8 then 8 is connected to 15 then conductor 15 is connected to 15 plus 7 that is 22 and then 22 is connected to conductor 3. So here 23 on front side is connected to conductor 3. Then 3 is connected to 3 plus 7 that is 10. 10 is connected to 17. Then 17 is connected to 24. Then 24 it is connected to this 24 it is connected to 5. So 24 conductor 24 it is connected to 5. Then 5 on back side is connected to 5 plus 7 that is 12. Then 12 on front side is connected to 12 plus 7 that is 19. Then 19 is connected to 19 plus 7 that is 26. So 19 is connected to 26 and then 26 is connected to 7. So 26 it goes to 7. Then 7 must be connected to 7 plus 7 that is 14. Then 14 is connected to 21. 14 is connected to 21 and then 21. 21 is connected to 2. So conductor 21 on back side it is connected to 2. Then conductor 2 is connected to 2 plus 7 that is 9. Then 9 is connected to 9 plus 7 that is 16. Then 16 is connected to 16 plus 7 that is 23. And then 23 it is connected to conductor 4. So 23 this 23 goes to 4. Then 4 on front side is connected to 4 plus 7 that is 11. Then 11 is connected to 18. Then 18 is connected to 18 plus 7 that is 23. 18 is connected to sorry 18 is connected to 25 and then 25 it is connected to 6 so this 25 it is connected to 6 then 6 is connected to 13 6 is connected to 13 then 13 is connected to 20 13 is connected to 20 and 20 must be connected to 20 plus 7 that is 27 and conductor 27 is nothing but conductor 1. So conductor 20 it is connected to conductor 1. So 20 is connected to 1. This 20 is connected to 1. So we started from conductor 1 and return back to conductor 1 without any break in between. So this forms a closed winding. Now each coil is to be connected to one commutator segment. So here every coil is connected to one commutator segment. Then these commutator segments can be numbered. Now after this we have to 
see the position of brushes where the brushes are to be placed now there are four poles in the machine so we can show the four poles here north then south then north and south now the conductors under north pole let they carry the current downward so the conductors under north pole they are carrying the current downward and conductors under south pole will carry the current upward so these currents will carry the current upward now with the help of these directions we can see what is the current here at every commutator segment so here we can see that at commutator segment 12 this 12 is connected to conductor 20 and conductor 1 in 20 the current is downward and in 1 also the current is downward so here the current is coming out whereas here at commutator segment 2 it is connected to conductor 26 and conductor 7 in conductor 7 the current is upward and in 26 also the current is upward so here the current is going in so we have to place <coughs> sorry <coughs> we have to place the brushes at commutator segment 2 and commutator segment 12 so here the brush at commutator segment 12 will be positive and the brush at commutator segment 2 will be negative now we will see how many parallel paths are there in this winding so here there are two brushes brush 2 and brush 12 so brush 12 it is assumed as positive and brush 2 as negative so we can trace the path between the two brushes so first of all this brush positive brush it is connected to conductor 1 then you can see that 1 is connected to 8 then 8 is connected to 15 then 15 is connected to 22 then 22 is connected to 3 then 3 is connected to 10 then 10 is connected to 17 here 10 is connected to 17 then 17 is connected to 24 and 24 is connected to 5 so this is conductor 5 then 5 is connected to 12 then 12 is connected to 19 and 19 is connected to 26 and 26 it is connected to the negative brush so this forms one path for current and similarly there is one more path between positive and negative brushes so this forms the another path so in case of wave winding number of parallel paths are always equal to 2 so this is the simplex wave winding and therefore number of parallel paths are always equal to 2 irrespective of number of poles so here number of poles are 4 whereas number of parallel paths are only 2 and therefore we will need only 2 brushes however in practice what we do instead of 2 brushes we use the number of brushes which are equal to number of poles so in this case there are four poles so instead of two brushes we can use four brushes again which are 180 degree electrical apart from each other and both positive brushes are connected together and both negative brushes are connected together so even if the number of brushes are 4 number of parallel paths are only equal to 2 but in order to obtain uniform current distribution over this commutator we can use 4 brushes instead of using 2 brushes but 2 brushes are sufficient in case of 
this wave winding. Now let us see what are the important points related to simple X wave winding. So in case of simple X wave winding, as already seen, only two brushes are required. However, in practice, more brushes are added at 180 degree electrical apart. So as to give better current distribution over the commutator. Then generally the number of brushes are equal to number of poles. So if number of poles are 4, normally 4 brushes are used. Then in wave winding, number of parallel paths is always equal to 2 and it is independent of the number of poles. Then EMF induced between the positive and negative brushes is equal to the EMF induced in any one path of the two parallel paths. So in one path, number of conductors are Z by 2. So EMF induced in Z by 2 is the actual induced EMF. And if IA is the total armature current, then current in one parallel path is always equal to IA divided by 2 because number of parallel paths are equal to 2. Let us now see the purpose of dummy or idle coils. Now these dummy or idle coils are used only with wave winding and these are not required in case of lap winding. Now we have already seen that in case of wave winding, the average pitch is given by Ya is equal to Z plus or minus 2 divided by number of poles and Ya must be an integer. Then only the winding is possible. Now for example, let the number of armature slots is equal to 15 and each conduct each slot contains four coil, four coil sides or conductors. So total number of conductors are 15 into 4 that is 60 and the number of poles is 4. Then Ya is equal to total number of conductors Z that is 15 into 4 60 plus or minus 2 divided by 4. Now you can see that this value is not integer as required by this winding and therefore wave winding is not possible. However, instead of using 60 armature conductors, if 58 active conductors are used, then Ya will be equal to 58 plus or minus 2 divided by 4, which is equal to 14 or 15, which is an integer and therefore this makes the winding possible. But instead of using 60 conductors, we have to use 58 conductors. So the result of using less conductors is that some slots will remain empty or some slots will be without any winding or conductor and therefore the armature will be out of balance mechanically. Now to avoid this, we can place dummy or idle coils in these empty slots. And the purpose of these dummy or idle coils is only to provide mechanical balance for the armature. So these dummy or idle coils, these are not connected to commutator or other coils. And therefore, as these dummy or idle coils, these are not connected to the commutator, these will not influence the electrical characteristics of the winding. And as these windings are dummy or idle, normally the ends of these coils are cut short and taped, whereas the coils are exactly similar, dummy coils are exactly similar to the 
other coils but their ends are cut short and taped so in this video we have studied how to draw a developed winding diagram for simplex wave winding now in the next video we will see the concept of commutation in dc machines thank you stay home stay safe